My name is Gerard Robinson. I'm Vice President for Education at the Advanced Studies and Culture Foundation in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm also a host of In Character. In Character provides me an opportunity to talk to wonderful people about wonderful ideas related to education, culture, and society. Recently, I had an opportunity to speak to several educators uh, who are in the classroom to talk to me about the role of the teacher in student formation. And tonight, I have one of those teachers. And since we're one-on-one, -on -one, I'd like to introduce Kristen and let her tell you a little bit about herself. Welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me back again. Uh, my name's Kristen Record. I am a high school physics teacher. I will be beginning my 21st year teaching at Bunnell High School in Stratford, Connecticut, and I'm the 2011 Connecticut Teacher of the Year. So physics, the subject that everyone loves. We just all Obviously. Love. Exactly. <laughs> of course. So you come from a family of educators. So that's something unique. Family who's interested in science. How do you get students, particularly high school students, interested in physics and to see the link between that and not only going to college or work, but the importance of just what it's like for thinking and, and growing? Well, for me, um, what I love about teaching science and physics in particular is the hook that it's everywhere around us. Yeah. And so um, I love being able to show kids everyday events or to show them like a neat little like experiment or something and then have them try to figure out why does it work that way or why doesn't it work that way or to ask them a very simple question like you know we've all seen a pot of boiling water what's inside the bubbles that's of the boiling water and kids get stumped and they don't know the right answer to what they think are very simple questions and then i have them hooked into understanding the wanting to know the whys and the hows of how the world works. And that's really what I love about teaching physics because it's so hands-on and I, I have this thing um, in my school where, you know, kids usually take other science classes before you get to physics. Um, mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that way, but it is. So I always tell them, I said, look, you tell me something else that you've learned in some other science class and I'm gonna show you how you'd really understand it better if you understood physics. And that's so true about everything in the world around us that um, I kind of tease the parents when I have them in for open house or, or um, parent conferences, I'm saying I'm really kind of indoctrinating your kids into thinking about the world the way I see it, like a scientist and like a physicist and to be able to explain why things happen the way that they do. And I know that it works because I just got an email from a kid a couple of days ago about something that they watched on TV and they said, Mr. Record, all I could see in it was the physics and I couldn't get the physics out of my head. So for me, um, it's just the love of the natural world. And I think inherent in that, um, because I mean, let's be real, it, physics really isn't everybody's favorite topic. Um, a lot of people are scared of it, you know, scared to come into a physics class and think it's hard. So um, that excitement of wanting to be there and being curious is very important. And I think being curious is part of being a lifelong learner and the ability to talk with kids about persevering through struggling and that not everyone gets things the first time and that learning is a lifelong process. And you know, like how I'm a physics teacher now and they all run to me for help with their calculus, but I struggled with calculus the first time I took it when I was in high school. But to a 17 year old kid, they're like, oh my God, like you struggled with, <laughs> with it. Of course I did, but you know, like you stick with things. And so there's a lot of um, personal skill building that um, goes hand in hand for me and my teaching uh, right along with the content. You talked about parents uh, and let's say we're in front of 50 parents right now. How do you convince us that we should be excited about getting our kid or our, our student into your class particularly when maybe we didn't do well in physics or as you said we're scared <laughs> of physics. How do you get us excited about it as parents? Um, kind of like the same way that I get the kids engaged. Um, and I ask them like simple questions. Like, well, what do you think about that? Like, if you had to give me an answer, people are like, oh, I have no idea how that works. I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't you want to know how that works? And, and so that idea that um, the 
physical world around us is understandable and that how um, being scientifically minded and being a critical thinker isn't just a value in a physics class. Mm -hmm. And so that idea that um, if you want to go into the business community, for example, business leaders highly value trained physicists. Why? Because we come with problem solving skill sets and critical thinking already as a part of our being and our essence. And so I've heard from a lot of business leaders and I have friends that have PhDs in physics that they'll go into finance or they'll go into some other field and that, um, that company will teach them the specific trade be, but they say it's your inherent skill set that's more valuable. I can teach you the specifics of my company or the job, but it's your mindset and your skill set that's valuable. So the the processes and the thinking and the mindset that go along with being a good science student mm -hmm. serve you well in so many other facets of life. So that's one of the selling points to parents that I make. Like this is not just about learning content, it's about learning lifelong skills and perseverance that your child is going to need wherever they go after my class. Absolutely. Superintendents and principals tell me the hardest position for them to fill is the physics teacher position. And you've probably heard this before. When you and your fellow uh, physicists get together for local, state, national meetings, what are your conversations about? <laughs> yeah, how do we get more people to do what we do? It's certainly <laughs> one of those conversations. This is before or after drinks. Yeah, <laughs> well, sometimes it's the drinks that lead to those conversations. because We're like, wow, if we leave, there's no one left to take our spot. <laughs> You know, and, and that's a serious thing. Um, I think that one of the things that we talk a lot about is just this idea of, um, particularly for physics, that people think it's only for the best and the brightest. Right. That's really not true. Um, in my school, I teach physics to everyone. So if you are, you know, if you're an AP student, obviously I teach AP physics. If you're, you know, honors level, college prep, level two, there is a physics class for you. And I think that we do people a disservice when we think of um, certain topics in science as a hierarchy that only physics is available for the special people. Right. Um, and that's something that I fight against all the time. Um, I want everyone in my class because I, again, like I, I feel so strongly that um, understanding the world around you is important, but also the skills that you learn in a physics class are really important. So the idea of breaking down that barrier and making physics seem accessible to more people is something that's really important to a lot of physics teachers. You earlier mentioned a student who said, you know what, I just couldn't get physics out of my head watching TV. And I know as a former teacher, receiving emails or running to students in the grocery store or somewhere, running into people who said, you know what, your class made a difference to me. Mm -hmm. What's the story that uh, makes you smile when it comes to a former student? Sure, well, two right off the bat. Um, yeah. One, because, um, who wouldn't be proud to have a former physics student go on to Princeton University for a degree in physics. Um, but then when they did their senior thesis um, at Princeton, um, part of the dedication was written to me. And when the student graduated, his family invited me to his graduation ceremony at Princeton. So that was just an amazing um, moment and you know, truly special for me. Um, but another one literally happened yesterday. Um, I went to a baby shower of one of my former students and uh, they played a game that was, how well do you know the mama? And there was like a questionnaire kind of thing um, and her whole family was amazed. Like, I won the contest. Like, yeah, I've known your daughter for 10 years. Like, I've known her since she was a 17 year old in my class. And I've kept up a relationship with her from her choosing all through college and then after college. And she's, um, you know, and so she's going to have a baby in October. And I was blessed to be invited to uh, her baby shower. But then also, you know, to really say, like, she was like, yeah, Miss Record really knows me. That is wonderful, and thanks for sharing both stories. You were the Teacher of the Year. 
Uh, most of us may never have an opportunity to meet someone like you in person. Talk to us about the process of what you had to go through to become Teacher of the Year. And then once you have the honor, what do you do for that year? <laughs> well, uh, in Connecticut, it's a really, um, it's really daunting process, actually. It's different in every state. Um, in Connecticut, you first have to be named your district Teacher of the Year. So I was nominated by colleagues. Um, we went through a district selection process, interviewed, um, all of that. And I was selected as the Stratford District Teacher of the Year. And from there, every District Teacher of the Year does a written application for State Teacher of the Year. That written application gets read by a large pool of readers and scored, I think, five or six times. And uh, all the points get added up. And at the end of that, um, in Connecticut, there's over 160 um, towns and districts. The top um, 15 people get selected as semi-finalists. And you all go up to um, the State House for in-person interviews. And so we had 30-minute in-person interviews. And it was like legit, like a hearing. So we were in a <laughs> hearing room. Um, and all of the panelists were in front of us with their little name placards and the, the microphones that go on and off. And you sat at the witness table. And you got <laughs> two minutes to answer their question. And when you got down to like your 30 seconds, they flashed a yellow light. And when it flashed red, you had to stop talking. So like it was intense. And um, from there, they then picked four finalists. And each of the finalists, the whole committee visited our schools for a site visit for a half of a day. They went everywhere in my school. Um, they went to the cafeteria. They talked to the custodians. They watched me teach. They met with parents. They met with students, board of ed members. You name a constituency group, they talked to them. Uh, and they did that for all four of the state finalists. And then the committee meets and votes. And I, I don't know, I'm still amazed to this day that I was selected. Um, and every year since 2011, when I sit at the Bushnell in Hartford, and I, you know, I get to know the next state teacher of the year. I always, it's, um, David Basso, who you know is another um, mm -hmm. state teacher. That I just, I always think to myself, my gosh, if that person was in my year, I wouldn't have been picked. Um, you know, I'm always just so impressed by the caliber of educators that we have in our state and in, in the country. So it's not about being the best, it's just being about representative. Um, and then you asked about what was the year like afterwards. So we then jo uh, joined a cohort of um, all of the state teachers of the year. And we were brought together my year in Dallas, where we um, received a week, literally five days of professional learning and training and teacher leadership um, in politics, in policy, in interviewing skills, and also getting to know each other, other teacher mm -hmm. leaders, both in our content discipline and not in our content discipline. Um, there was actually another female physics teacher from another state in my class. So like that was super cool because I don't know very many other women physics teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and we, so we started our, you know, our camaraderie at that point. And then we had a week in May in Washington, DC where uh, we got to go to the White House and we met um, individually for a couple minutes with President Obama. We had the ceremony in the Rose Garden. We had a reception at the Vice President's Mansion. Uh, we did things at the Smithsonian. We had more professional learning. We got to tour Washington, D.C. Uh, we had opportunities to meet with our congressional representatives. I mean, it was just an amazing, amazing experience. And then again, as a physics teacher, super cool thing that happened in August, we got to go to space camp for a week. Um, so we did um, astronaut training simulations and had STEM professional learning for a whole week. So I got to pilot a simulated mission. Um, I was the pilot of the space shuttle Atlantis. Okay. And then, uh, I got to do a second mission and I was Capcom. So that was super cool. <laughs> I mean, like, this is like a geeky science teacher for me right here. So I have my flight suit and like, yes. I wear my flight suit to school. And like, you know, my kids are like, oh my God, are you an astronaut? I'm like, no, but I did go to space camp. <laughs> um, and then in the fall, we were all brought back together again um, for a conference called the Next Steps Conference, where we very seriously focused on now that we've had a year of recognition and a year of honor, what are we going to do in our years of service to the profession? 
and that's where that's the place where I've been living um, since the beginning of 2012. What what am I doing for my service to the profession? Well, I can say based upon what I heard tonight, as well as what I heard before, I think we all know why you were chosen Teacher of the Year. So. So Thank glad to have you in that position. Kristen, thanks for joining me on In Character to talk about your work and your impact on students. Keep up the good work and uh, we're here to support you. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure.